board. Pressure then from Europe reportedly convincing Obama not to pull out of the treaty for fear of it prompting an arms race. And joining me from Moscow, New York Times journalist Ivan Nechaparenko and from Washington DC, Deputy Director of Congressional Relations from the Foundation for Defence of Democracies, Boris Zilberman. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Boris, we'll get you to, to kick us off. Uh, President Trump says that Russia is violating the treaty. Russia says the US is violating the treaty. What's going on? Well, I can kick off. Uh, look, it's not just the Trump administration, it's the Obama administration. Uh, every year since 2014, the State Department uh, has come out in the reporting and said that uh, the Russian Federation is in violation of this treaty. Um, the tests uh, reportedly have, were, have been going on since 2008. Uh, and the INF Treaty doesn't really address the U.S. concerns on Asia. So I think there's going to be things that the U.S. is going to have to do to reassure our European allies, who I think are kind of most worried about the, this change in the, in the treaty, uh, or the U.S. pulling out, rather. Uh, but, you know, how good is a treaty if one party's uh, not obliging to it and it doesn't really kind of take in the reality, uh, the strategic reality that the U.S. is now facing around the world? All right, Ivan, to you in Moscow, what is Russia concerned about with the U.S. Uh, saying it's going to leave this treaty? Well, of course, Russia is concerned about the situation on its borders, uh, basically uh, with this treaty gone, the U.S. can install intermediate range uh, nuclear-tipped missiles in Poland, and uh, from Poland they can take five minutes to reach uh, uh, Moscow, so of course it makes uh, Russia much more wary about it. Uh, at the same time, as uh, was mentioned before, Russia has been developing its own missile. Um, for a long time, and it will be able to come out from the dark and install those missiles. Um, but in the end, uh, the world is going to be a more dangerous place, even though uh, what was uh, unofficial become an official uh, suddenly. All right, Boris, back to you. What does this mean for United States security? Of course, we've heard from Ivan that it makes the world a more dangerous place. How dangerous is this? Look, I mean, I think it's already dangerous because, again, the Russians have been violating this treaty, testing um, missiles that, uh, that violate it. Uh, the Chinese are not uh, beholden to it. Uh, so I think it's really now on the administration uh, to see if you can either, A, come up with another treaty that is that more parties can actually comply with, because uh, there, are, there are some issues that even the Russians today uh, admitted, uh, the Kremlin spokesman, that, you know, there, there are issues with the treaty. Uh, you know, outside of the Russians actually violating the treaty. Uh, but again, I think the U.S. is going to have to do, uh, potentially, again, deploy uh, defensive systems to Europe that will kind of reassure uh, our NATO allies and our European allies uh, that, you know, Russia cannot, you know, just move in uh, missiles that uh, threaten NATO without a U.S. response. OK, Ivan, back to you in Moscow. Should Europe's warnings vis-a-vis -vis an arms race be heeded? Is that something that the United States and the world should be worried about? Well, as was said before by my colleague, uh, it's not about the treaty as such, it's about the situation on the ground. Uh, the treaty uh, was seriously outdated because it didn't correspond to the situation in Europe, to the fact that uh, uh, the U.S. is building a missile defense system, to the fact that Russia is installing missiles in its uh, Kaliningrad region right in the middle of Europe. So it wasn't really about the treaty. The treaty is just a symbol now, and the fact that it is gone is actually might, might actually be a good thing because uh, from now on we're gonna uh, instead of deceiving each other about who is violating, who is not violating, we're actually gonna uh, be speaking about the situation in real terms. Okay, Boris. One treaty after another, Trump is either scrapping or reworking. This is, uh, seems to be part of Trump's typical strategy that we see time and time again. Does it appear to be working in America's favor? Look, I think on Iran, it certainly is, where you see 
uh, sanctions are coming back into place, and uh, the market is reacting like the Trump administration thought, where they are uh, pulling out of their deals with Iran, uh, and you know the, the, the pressure is back on, and countries are diminishing their uh, imports of Iranian oil. So I think on that, uh, in that sense, it's working. On some of the trade deals, uh, I think Trump has gotten better deals on. Uh, and then what, what we see now is arm control is going to be a, you know a different issue, uh, but can you get? Uh, again, I think as I haven't said too. Now that the treaty is done, uh, you're kind of a level playing field, right? The Russians don't, you know, the Russians aren't pretending they're part of this treaty while they're violating it. Uh, and now we can address kind of again the strategic situation as a whole in the world with China uh, and Russia, and you know, and I think so. I think uh, this is a new challenge, uh, but we've seen at least in other cases uh, with the scrapping the JCPOA that I think it's working, uh, working in the favor of the United States at this moment. All right, Boris Zilberman, appreciate that insight from Washington D.C. and from Moscow, Ivan Nechaparenko. Thank you for sharing those perspectives.